Hello there cellists. Here we are in our final tuition lesson in this series. So this is our 12th week, the fourth lesson in this week and of course the fifth video will be the performance video. So this is our final class. And today I have for you in store some technicals as ever, the final portion of foyer number 47 and Rachmaninoff. Now we will be looking at the final remaining section that we haven't covered yet, which is from bar 49. And just to make it clear, I think yesterday I mentioned that there's the return of the theme. Well, it is the return of the theme for us, but the recap has already begun, in fact. So it began yesterday at bar 41, where we were having the interweaving beautiful little triplets that sort of rose up to the top and back again. That's a, an interweaving line to the return of the melody of the piano, which I think I touched on, but maybe didn't make it crystal clear, but that is a recap. Um, so we'll, more of that anon. Now I'd also mentioned yesterday that I gave you G minor uh, for a refreshing change, which is the key of the whole sonata, rather than something else I had in mind. The thing I had in mind is A flat minor because it is touched upon really beautifully in the Rachmaninoff. So I think, you know, we first encountered that at bar 46 but now it's going to sort of like keep on making an appearance. So uh, it comes in at bars 57, 58, 61, 63, you know, and it's actually a really clever little um, mechanism. We mentioned previously the change of one note in a triad uh, can just very quickly change it. Um, for example, um, moving from E flat major to G minor, you know, with one change going down from E flat to a G. Uh, and interestingly, actually, uh, what he's doing here is where we have um, E flat major. We keep the E flat where it is and you rise the, the other two notes up a semitone. And you've arrived at A flat minor. So it's quite interesting, actually, that the one note that previously we dropped to get to G minor, so we had and we do to G minor. And now if you raise those other two notes, we get to A flat minor. So um, we'll look at that now. And that has seven flats, slight improvement on the D flat minor we looked at earlier in the week, which was eight flats, which of course you can only do by double flatting the B. Uh, so it should be a little bit easier. Um, and I think we would take the melodic version because I quite like to sort of feel the um, F natural, G natural, which are very much more prevalently used. And in that combination, we don't get much in the way of any augmented um, tones uh, in this intervals in this piece. So let's just have a look at the melodic scale then. sharp minor which is probably how we will have learned it okay now other things in the technical aspect which get us into the mood for the piece and really understanding the geography and the thinking of the flat thinking um, I think it will be useful for us actually um, to look at a flat minor arpeggio but with an added sixth because actually that is what Rachmaninoff does for example in bar end of bar 46 there's a sort of a slight uh, sort of uh, it's a vagary, if you like, as to is it F minor with with an added um, uh, what note is adding adding the seventh at the top, or is it A flat minor with an added sixth? I'm going to go for that option, A flat minor with the added sixth. So that arpeggio means we're adding an F into it. Um, and I rather like actually starting this in second inversion like this. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> I hope you like that. Um, here it is in print, ready for a freeze frame on your video here. There it is, the A flat minor arpeggio with the added sixth in second inversion, which really makes it sound rather delightful. You can experiment with this in other inversions, but I think it's worth a little look. And one other thing which I thought would be worth a look 
is actually the, another augmented arpeggio and this is because it's again going to make an appearance um, in this part of the piece. Let me just have a look there. I think it's actually at a very critical spot. Um, let me see if I can identify it in the score. have to be quick at seeing it and um, I can't see it quickly enough. Uh, da, 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 da. See all the usual things there. Aha! It is sitting at another diminished one. Oh, there we are, augmented. Got it. It's at the end of bar um, 58. <coughs> anyway, the important thing is have a go at it. So we start on a G, then C flat, or think B natural if you need to, then E flat. We're coming up to B natural, or is it C flat? You know, he writes both, doesn't he? Uh, actually, in that very spot, 55, 56, 57. So, um, I think a useful one to put into your portfolio. Right, let's, uh, before we continue with more Rachmaninoff, <laughs> finish him off, um, we'll go to the four yard study number 47. So, yesterday we've arrived at bar 13 with this F minor. Now, funnily enough, that's actually over. That's what we're doing there with the A flat um, added six, but it's sort of A flat major added six. Just a food for thought. Uh, in the middle of there, we have an art in articulate shift. So remember, technically speaking, you need to get that elbow a bit high so that you can pull yourself back and not against the joint there, okay? Another one, same thing here. And here we arrive in our home key. Um, so the, the whole thing uh, it sort of flows very beautifully. We've been thinking about harmonies this week, uh, implicit harmonies from what you see in front of you, even when in this instance there is no accompaniment to check it over you can still try and identify patterns, shapes, and imagine the vertical structure rather than always everything on the horizontal path. So uh, the whole of this um, little study then. consider if you're thinking about this as a pre preparation for some of your uh, line work in the Rachmaninoff is you could make up your own bow idea. I mean the bottom of this study they give you um, three different possible bow articulations you could try which are different um, but maybe we pick one that matches exactly with the idea of what we're doing in Rachmaninoff. So you could do three notes for a bow but lift the third <laughs> but fracturing lifted, so we're not actually coming off the string. And then... You get the idea. Um, so that's another way that you could perhaps try it out and take it at a steadier pace so that you can really observe how your bow is working. All right, so that's that study done. So, turning our attentions to our, our return of the theme, which has already been well established by the lovely piano um, previous to our entry here at bar 49. Now, um, of course, on the page for the cellist, that looks pretty much exactly the same as it did at the very start of this movement. Um, but as ever, there's a difference and you need to know what that difference is. So previously, when, when we entered um, on the very first occasion in the exposition, there were continual semiquavers going on in the piano part. 
but it's time not. So the right hand of the piano has got these beautiful uh, uh, triplets like we have had at 41, you know, that lovely interweaving um, sub subsidiary melody, if you like. And this time the left hand is taking a much simpler view. It's going in for straight quavers, you know, so you can be sure that you lock in with the left hand of the piano, you know, listen out for it, because it's a lot of sound here, you know, it's forte. And of course, with the triplets in the piano, they're all huge chords. I was just having a little look the other day and Rachmaninoff's natural span was on 12 white, white notes without any effort at all. Can you imagine that? Absolutely incredible. So, you know, very thick chords going on in the triplet part of the right hand, a lot of notes. So you listen to the left hand and fit with those quavers. The other thing we might observe is that previously we've seen a kind of structural mechanism where um, in the, the second um, section of this piece from bar 17 where we've got rests, but even when we do come in, uh, we had the situation where every two bars, um, it would triple it away and then every two bars there were a couple of beats of semi-quavers to give the sense of in, being impetuous. Um, and he employs something similar here. So we've got now just duplets in the left hand and then the every two bars triplets. So we're starting to get that same idea, but taking it, peeling it back. So we've got a much slower kind of fundamental in the left hand, moving to the triplets, <clears throat> which will be no surprise that they will absolutely take over from bar 53 onwards. And it's just triplets all the way for the piano. Um, well, I say all the way, <laughs> and up to our peak point. Uh, but we're still remaining very much in duplet um, divisions, if you like. So uh, let's just see what we have. This is going to be very, very bold, very settled. You'll need to use some arm weight to make sure that you get a good tone. Don't press from above, try and get the arm weight hanging from the bow. <laughs> actually does last the full length of the bar and that's the bar where suddenly we get ba -da 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 triplets coming in from the left hand of the piano as well as the right um, and it's, you need that awareness because of course um, the place where I've just stopped <laughs> duplet quaver at the end of the bar you have to place it very carefully because you'll hear triplets um, one, two, three. so you'll need to hear two triplets fit your note in before the third one <laughs> and it is really important to get the jigsaw puzzle working don't leave it too late and, and end up fitting on a triplet note um, you know sort of keep the breadth of it because in a way we've got to pace ourselves we know this is coming up to the, the peak in actual fact of the piece of the movement um, so just hold back on giving away everything it's very difficult because we're already forte but somehow we must do that so temporally speaking be careful if your time divisions don't push forward uh, and therefore raise the um, temperature as it were of the piece at this moment um, so we have two, three. Now in terms of the movement across the string there, from the D string to the A string, we need to really work very hard on that D string, dotted minimum B flat, to keep the volume, um, not allowing it to drop, because you're about to move to a much louder string uh, and we don't want it to stand out too much, it's got to be in line. Um, at this point, of course, we now got a, a much, much thicker texture in the piano, so you've got an awful lot more to have to try and work against it. So whilst you're just playing this note, there is, um, you know, nine lots of chords going on <laughs> in the piano part. Uh, so you haven't got much of a chance, really. You just you've got to hold it and believe in it. We then move across the string. We somehow still got to be holding something back. So it may be worth a conversation with your pianist that is it possible that we can just momentarily just drop the dynamic a tiny bit as we cross the string here. Build up again. As you can see, 
a lot of work required. Uh, and you can feel, even without hearing the harmonies that do belong underneath it, you can feel something amazing is happening, and it certainly is. Because the bar before this, uh, this is where I'm talking about, bar 56, we've just got some very simple notes, F and G, that's it. Uh, but it's it's now breaking off from what we had previously in the exposition. And uh, here we have a G7 chord going to C minor. That's not often used in, in this piece. Um, going into E minor, ooh, you know, um, which is that B natural, this harmonised by E minor harmony unexpectedly. We turn it to a C flat under which there's going to be a diminished chord with added seventh. And it turns into A flat minor, which is what I've mentioned to you at the beginning of class, that it's uh, unexpected, absolutely beautiful colour, um, which immediately drops to E flat in the following bar as we as we drop to the key note. And that's by this chromatic shift, which I've mentioned earlier. Um, in terms of the bowing here, it might be, um, might be, um, kind of tempting to put in a lot of separate bows um, when you turn to the C flat. You might want to do but mm, there could be a real sticking point trying to keep the fluency from the C flat down to the E flat as a semiquaver at that point. Now this is a moment again where you've got to be careful about your placement. Um, there's still triplets going on in the piano right hand, uh, or the duplets in the left, and you need to fit a semiquaver in after the triplet. Um, but it would be quite nice to have it feeling connected and, and attached. Uh, we could try it with an endeavour. You know, with a little tiny move here. Um, slightly weak at this point to try and uh, hold on to that and make sure it's absolutely clear and still going into the arrival note which is the following bar. So although you may feel fractionally compromised in the printed bowing, I think it's worth doing. Which means your semiquaver is at a really strong part of the bow. Uh, this is what's marked by, by Rachmaninoff. So we have the two C flats are marcato marks in the same direction. Work really hard, it can work. And I think it's more dramatic. The effort and the endeavour are then a fabric of that intensity. Um, we arrive then at the C flat. Now don't give up on the drama too quickly here. It's very easy to think, whew, got past that bit and you're coming back in register you're arriving at an E flat and it almost feels like you could just sit down now but uh, but don't <laughs> so you need to kind of keep the, the tension perhaps with a fast vibrato um, there's still a great deal going on with uh, some lovely 6-5 uh, suspensions in the piano it is really um, very rich still and you're dropping to a pitch where you might get a bit lost inside the enormous range that the piano is still maintaining here. Um, so we come up from the bottom here. So um, personally I do split those four, they're written as um, but it's quite nice as the A flat is kind of like a place you're really moving to um, and we're moving into um, about to come into a dominant seventh harmony here. Uh, personally, I do like to split them then. And notice going across the string, side by side fingers, to get a beautiful smooth transition on the perfect fifth. Now that B flat at the end of bar 59 looks terribly innocent from your point of view. Yes it is, but again, it's another place where you must look out where you put it because it, there is a triplet going on in the piano. In fact, there are full triplets in both right and left hand at this point, and they are the last triplets of the piece. So uh, there's a sense, if you like, of almost an incorporated writ by putting those triplets. Hya ta ta, hya ta ta. And you must catch your note before the third triplet of that beat. Uh, it's, it's lovely when it's done perfectly. Um, 
and sits in the right location. It means that then you're keeping your breadth of your B flat, it's keeping its full length, and you're keeping the duplet nature that you have established throughout this section. Um, so of course, this is an arrival on the tonic um, chord. Ah, oh, peace at last, you know, E flat major. And in these next couple of bars, um, where you've just landed on the E flat and then you have a bars rest, there's a very dreamy quality to the piano. Ya da dee da, ya da da da. It's really, uh, really reposed and calm. And again, moves momentarily to that A flat minor, yearning kind of harmony and dropping back to E flat. Um, and actually it's going to do the same again in just a moment. So they've re-arrived at E flat major at the next bar where you come in and this is another of those sort of breathy bow strokes bars. And notice there that the arrival on that E flat then has a crescendo through that crotchet. It's very easy to arrive and then be loud straight away on that A flat that followed, but be careful to join the two together with a crescendo on the crotchet. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> so we've got a ritardando then and a very careful placement of the B flat at the next hour tempo pair. Um, keep it long enough, the same as at bar 60. Make sure you keep the absolute length that's written which is a minim and a quaver. Um, again, you can sit back and listen to a couple of these beautiful bars where there's a lovely rising arpeggio in the left hand and then falls back down again, um, which gives us this really sort of, uh, sort of a gentle, calm nature, rise and fall, like waves in the sea, but sort of feeling very, very calm. Um, and the, the harmony again um, is very settled actually now. We're really sort of just sitting E and flat, that's it. Um, until, of course, you come in with this C. And the piano has just got a sort of oscillating E flat in the right hand. It's very, very delicate at this point. There's no left hand piano for the first half of the bar. So your C natural will make the, the E flat harmony. Give it almost a moment of like, it's like C flat minor with an added seventh, um, or it's actually perhaps more likely a six five suspension. <laughs> anyway, lovely note. Stay on the D string here. Now, as you move to that D, um, we've now come to a dominant seventh harmony, which is B flat major with an added A flat. And uh, in terms of careful positioning, that F semiquaver must fit exactly with the semiquavers in the piano. You've been hearing them all the time, um, you know, since uh, the R tempo da, 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 at bar 64. There's semiquavers all the time, so you've absolutely got the feeling of them. Ya da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 so be careful with it. We don't want to, we don't want to have any extra effort or weight upon that note, and neither do we want it to be lazy. It's not lazy either. Be careful. It's not a triplet. He would have written that if he wanted it. <laughs> so there's something about it where it is very precisely placed, but still little, tiny. <laughs> so um, you're going to have to do your best at good, doing good saving, especially as it's quite a short string, which means that you could potentially might get through this bow quicker than you should, you should do. So we've got, um, if you've got a pause on the last bar, which we do have, then we've realistically got uh, at least 10 crotchets worth of holding that note for. 
whilst the piano does a beautiful rise and a final chord, which must also have its own time to listen to that chord and start to naturally evaporate on the piano before you agree to lift off the sound from your pedal, uh, fingers, bows, everything coming off there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So let's just have a look at the whole phrase all together. I'm just going to double check my spikes nice and sort of firm there. So our return, which has already been returned, don't forget. <laughs> Breathing's everything. You may have noticed um, by taking some breaths when it's becoming very, very um, full of temperature, uh, like 56 or something like that. Um, breathing actually does help, not only for your thinking, but also getting oxygen to your muscles. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoy your fun um, working through this movement. Um, and good luck with finding a pianist, it's true, <laughs> to try and play this piano part, because it's quite demanding. <laughs> Uh, you might find there are some minus one programs out there where you can get yourself a recording of a piano uh, and work out how to fit it into that, which I can tell you is very difficult when it's sort of statically recorded, which is of course what I am going to be endeavouring to do for tomorrow's performance. Uh, so it's not really quite the same as actually being able to perform with our musicians in the same room. And gosh, don't we miss that. Uh, so, well, we're making the most of it and hopefully I can come up with something that sort of captures something of what we've discussed this week, even if it isn't quite as um, natural as playing with a live musician at the same time. <laughs> Take care everybody and I hope you've enjoyed the series. <laughs>